All right, so let's just uh, let's just jump right in. A bit of Jesus, halfway moon, or January. A bit of Jesus means halfway moon in English. And you can see there, there's a little half a moon there. <laughs> <laughs> it's also known as Gitchi Manadu Gizas. Oh, what? Great Spirit Moon. January has two names. Abita Gizas and uh, Gitchi Manadu Gizas. The Great Spirit Moon. In February, we have Name Bene Gizas. Name Bene is a sucker fish moon. Or February. Mm. The sucker fish gave their life to the Anishinaabe. <laughs> oh, yeah. <for> <laughs> and then March, we've got Ona Bunny Gizas, crust on the snow moon. March. Oh. Ona Bunny Gizas. And there's an ondeg saying, Buju Gajagains. Hello, cat. <laughs> Iskagama Zage Gizas, sap boiling moon. Or April. Iska Gamazake, Jesus. And uh, there's some guys uh, singing on a powwow drum. Yeah. Yay, give me one. Yay, it's <laughs> raining. Zage Baga Jesus. Flower budding moon. Or May. Zage Baga Jesus. It is the flower budding moon. And then we got June. Is Ode a mini Jesus? Or strawberry moon? June is called Ode a mini Jesus. It is the strawberry moon. And then by July we call it a bitta ni bini Jesus halfway summer moon. July. Oh, uh. A bitta <laughs> ni bini Jesus. And we're halfway through the summer in July. And then August is Manu Minike Jesus. Wild Rising Moon. And the wolf is saying, Mino Giza good. It was a good day. Hmm. Oh, it's a good day for butterflies. <laughs> yeah, I guess. Then comes September. What day Bugga Gizas? Leaves changing moon. September. What day Bugga Gizas? Leaves changing moon. September. Leaves are changing. And then the leaves start to fall in Benakwe Gizas. Leaves falling moon or October. Benakwe Gizas. Leaves falling moon. October. And then Burr Gisana. Burr, it's cold. <laughs> Gushkadino Gizas. It is the freezing over Ooh, moon burr. or November. <laughs> Gushkadino Gizas. Freezing over moon. Burr, that guy's freezing. And then finally, December, Manadu Gizas Soons. It is the little spirit moon. Yeah. Manadu Gizas Soons. Little spirit moon. And there's a little spirit saying, Boo! <laughs> <laughs> and the guy goes, Ho oh, ah! oh, Gibberish! By Michael Lyons. This is available on Amazon. Just click the link. <laughs> Nice. Anyway, uh, you have been watching Buju, not a Buju, a podcast about Ojibwe language and culture. I am not a Buju, and I will see you again. Gigawabamin, Menawa, Hawa, Ojibberish. Welcome back to Buju Nanabuju, a podcast about Ojibwe language and culture. I am Nanabuju, and uh, show me my feather. And uh, over here, over here, the lovely and the talented Natasha Ikadon Buju Inimushane. Say hello, sweetheart. 
Hey everybody, how's it going? <laughs> and over here, the rock star cartoonist, the man behind all those illustrations for the months of the year, Michael Lyons. Thank you, Don Bujuniji. Say hello. Say hello to your fans. <laughs> hey everybody. <laughs> and uh, yeah, these are the months of the year. Today's Ojibwe lessons, I guess. Wait, that's Gushkadino Gizos. That's that's this month, huh, sweetie? Yep. That was yesterday's word of the day. November. It's a freezing over moon. But I thought it might be a good day to play the uh that old months of the year. I'm it's kinda of clickbait, actually, you guys. <laughs> I'm hoping somebody will be like, oh yeah, well, I gotta Google the names of the months of the year in Ojibwe. And they'll 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 stumble across our video. And maybe they'll come by and they'll say good morning to the Buju crew. To to Grass Red Indians. Buju. Gold star for Grass Roots, sweetie. Hey, Grass Roots, what's going on? <laughs> and Daniel Black is in second place. Can we get a silver star for Daniel? Hey Daniel! How's it going, Niji? And Brian Souls, let's, uh, oh yeah, nothing, nothing for third place, Brian. You should have got up earlier. Put a sad face by Brian. There you go, just draw a sad face and put a little tear underneath. All right, just like that. I'm very disappointed in you, Brian. But Wally Bear's here. Hey, Wally Bear. All right, Wally Bear. <laughs> I don't care who's in fourth, you know, but third place, that's disgraceful. How could you? How dare you? <laughs> How dare you? How double dog dare you? That's that's what people like to be like to say these days. You can't go a day without somebody on in social media saying, How dare you? Everybody wants to be insulted. Oh, I'm so outraged. How dare you? <laughs> but Shelly Ham Ham knows what I'm talking about, don't you, Shelly? Shelly's here, sweetie. Hey, Shelly. Who's you, my sister? <laughs> and Zaga May's here. Cousin Missy's here. Oh, wow. Brian says, hey, I was in second place. I don't think so, Brian. I think um, Daniel beat you. Daniel snuck in right in front, and Grassroots was first, so. No, I'm sorry, Brian. You, you get no... You want a bronze star. Daniel wants a, Brian wants a bronze star for being third. Well, why don't we just give everybody a participation trophy? Yeah. I don't think so, Brian. Not on my watch. <laughs> There's only a few things I feel strongly about. Bronze stars. Mm -mm. Your first loser. <laughs> Daniel Black says, I'll gift you my silver star. No, no sharing, Daniel. Because I'm like that. Daniel, you, you don't get to give away your stars. This is the only way he'll learn. <laughs> Wally Bear says, third place is usually bronze, according to my Nordic Greek culture. Yeah, well, they also used to run the marathons in a nude. Welcome to the modern age. All right, we've given up those old primitive ways here. Now, on to Ojibwe culture. <laughs> Did you know that back in the days of the grandfathers, <laughs> today, how do we start today, sweetie? You can tell them the day is Tuesday. Today is Nijo Gija Good. It is the second day. Nijo Gija Good. Now, when you count to two, you actually say Bejeg. Nij. So sometimes people get confused. They're like, oh yeah, Nij gives you good. No, no, no. When you say second, you got to add an O. Nijo. It is the second day because it's the second day of the work week. Here we are. You really, you just plug it in. Okay, the, the week's begun. No more blaming Mondays. You know, now it's Tuesday. You've been on the job for three minutes. Second day in. You got seven hours and 53 minutes left. <laughs> However long your work day is. Probably seven and a half because they don't pay you for lunch. Or eight and a half. I don't know. Eight and a half hours from now. 
they'll let you leave. And then you'll only have three more days. So you actually, have, well, okay, it's four more days to the weekend. But then it's just another five days after that until payday. So it's actually nine days until payday. If we can just hold out nine more days. And look at that, a whole nother minute's gone by. Well, you were supposed to be working, but instead you went, ah, what's that old, what's that old Nana Buju doing today? I'm just going to tune in. See, see what he, I'm going to learn a word for Ojibwe before I get started on my work. The boss will never know. That's what you're saying to yourself. But no, nope. hang in there. 804. That's what I used to be like when I had a, most of my jobs really. But working on a cubicle <laughs> or making copies in a print shop. Even teaching in a school. Just kind of, okay, how much how much time is left? I can go home. Hey now. <laughs> now I'm here and I still start at eight. Hey, we're actually on time today. I know, I can't believe it. There you go. So much for Indian time. Nijo Gija good. It's the second day. Tuesday. Write it down. This is gonna be on a test. In one year. Get Kanuno in. We're gonna have a big old test. And anybody, everybody who passes it, it's gonna be about a, a pretty comprehensive. This is what we, what we should do, sweetie. What's that? We should host a um, Zoom meeting or whatever. You know, like they're always doing when you have to take a webinar or whatever. We need to finally figure out how to do that. And we'll post it on the Buju Crew Facebook page. And we'll invite everybody in so we can finally have interactive, real-time video of everybody who's watching. And then we'll have a test. <laughs> and we'll go through and we'll test people on their, what they learned in Ojibwe. And if they pass the test, like I'll just throw out, what's the Ojibwe word for, you know, year? And if they can tell me, we let them stay. If, if they can't remember, we kill them. <laughs> Don't kill the Buju crew. No, I'm serious. This is like uh, that that new TV show I haven't seen. Where the game show they kill people. Yeah, I I know almost nothing about it, but it'll be like that. Game of what's what's the one where they uh, kill the kids? I don't know. I never saw it. Yeah. We gotta go start seeing more movies. I don't I don't get any references. Get Kanuno in. It's a year. Oh, and what a year it's been. And Agizus is the sun. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> what do you mean, the month? All right, this is the confusing thing about the word Gizus. Gizus means month when you're talking about words like Gashkadino Gizus, freezing over moon. They say, oh, moon, you mean? I thought it meant month. Well, Every 28 days, the moon does a cycle. And that's pretty close to what the white man calls the month. All right. So we had uh, actually 13 moons in the calendar. Gakino. What's that word? Gikkanu no win. Uh, so, Bagizas. When used in that way, is means the moon. A dibic, dibic Jesus is a nighttime. Dibic god means nighttime or evening. Jesus. So the evening sun is what they called the moon. They didn't call it a round rock that Neil Armstrong landed on. <laughs> it was the nighttime sun. Jesus sun, Jesus moon. And the Jesus is also a month. And it's Jesus, not Jesus. <laughs> Jesus is a totally different thing. And then there's Gisha Good. The day. Oh, the day. Gisha Good. Mino Gisha Good. Good day. Good day, sir. Good day, ma'am. Well, good day to you, my gentle sir. <laughs> good day to you, gentle ma'am. Um, so, yeah, there you go. Kikanu no win. Jesus. And Gija good. The year. 
the month, and the day. Days drag on when you have a job. I heard this great bit that I'm just now sort of really learning to appreciate that uh, Chris Rock did. Yeah. What's the difference between nigga and nigger? <laughs> no. It was a, a difference between uh, having a job and a career. Because when you got a job, there's uh, time just drags by. It's too many hours in the day. You know, you watch that clock. And you're just wishing time away. When you got a career, not enough hours in the day. You know? Your career is all your project. You just want to, you know, everything that's not working on your career is just a thing. You're taking a break from your career to go make a sandwich, to take a shower, to pay a bill, whatever it is, you know, to go live, you know, have a relationship with your children, whatever it is. But then you get back to your career. But your job, <laughs> most of my life I've just had jobs. Where you show up the last possible second. You know, you don't want to waste any of your life being at your job. So by this time, you've worked out the timing. Well, if I warm up the car for 10 minutes and uh, uh, go out, it takes me exactly eight and a half minutes to drive from my house if the traffic's normal. So I'll leave nine minutes to eight. <laughs> It'll give me 30 seconds to walk from the... Uh, car into the building if the boss sees me then I'll be counted as being on time I can kill some time getting coffee whatever you know and then you go to your job go do the thing you're getting paid for most jobs you know careers don't aren't like this jobs are you're doing something you don't want to do you're giving up your life and your time and your body for money. So whether it's, okay, I'm going to go here, I'm going to drill holes into this paper, and I'll make it a three-hole punch thing. That was my job for the next couple hours. I'm going to staple these things, you know, these books. I'm going to wash these dishes. I'm going to shovel. Whatever it is. I'm going to teach a class in a jib <laughs> Um, and then you look up at that clock. Okay, good. Ten minutes have gone by. And it's like you're holding your breath. going, I can't wait for the day to get over. I just want to go home. Get in your car. And then you're just in a good mood again. You don't even have to be at home yet. You're just driving home. Oh, I'm going to turn on the radio, roll down the window, <laughs> light up a well-deserved cigarette. Da, 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 da. School's out for the teachers. Na, 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 na. You know. <laughs> but that's a job. When you have a career, this is when you finally figure out a way to make some junior, to make some money doing something you like doing anyway. <laughs> Thank you, Shelly. Shelly, this is my point exactly. Shelly Ham just gives us five bucks. Sweetie, Shelly Ham gave us five bucks. Well, Shelly, bless your heart. <laughs> um, so, it was a perfect timing. Shelly says, I was wondering who you and Natasha's favorite band or singer is. Well, here we go. So, part of the reason why I'm sitting here today is that my favorite singers and bands were also my, my greatest teachers and inspirations. So, I started with kiss oh but let me uh to finish on careers i think this show is finally our career because i can't wait to do it i you know in some way or another we're always sort of working on it thinking about it you know preparing or whatever and it doesn't feel like a job you know um there's not enough hours in the day and then, boom, just like that, somebody watching the show goes, hey, here's five bucks. Go get yourself a cup of coffee. I like what you're doing. You see, when you have a career, when you're on your path, when you're walking the red road, the creator will just take care of you. He'll pay your bills. He goes, yeah. 
I mean, it might. Some people say, "Oh, it feels like success," but it's it's your life goal, your life path. So there's Paul Stanley and Ace Frehley and Gene Simmons and Eric Carr. I don't have a Peter Chris doll because why? Why would I? <laughs> That'd be silly. But well, my favorite band has always been Kiss. Not just because I kind of like, you know, classic rock music and guitars, you know. But because as a little guy, Paul Stanley would always say, Hey, you kids, you can do whatever you want with your life. You can be whoever you want if you just believe in yourself and follow your dreams. I mean, look at me. I'm in a rock band called Kiss. And uh, I just believed in myself. And sure enough, I didn't listen to the people said we couldn't do it. And so I started thinking, man, I want to be a rock star. And I also love to draw. So I drew Paul Stanley and Ace Frehley and Gene Simmons. I even drew Peter Chris. Over and over again, dreaming. Oh, wouldn't it be fun to do something kind of cool, become a cool guy? <laughs> you know. And along the way, I listened to Kiss music, watched Kiss concerts, read interviews, whatever. Just follow, you know, watched them grow up. To this day, you know, even now that I can tell Paul Stanley can't even sing anymore, I still love Kiss. But then, that old David Bowie hikes. When I was a uh, like 14-year-old, I remember the day I had to choose between buying a David Bowie album or a Bruce Springsteen album. Because I knew whoever's music I kind of got into would sort of influence the course of my life. If I, look, if I went down the Bruce Springsteen path, I'd probably start, you know, riding motorcycle, working on cars, doing that kind of thing. But if I started listening to David Bowie music, I'd feel more like an artist. And so... I would listen to Bowie and draw pictures of David Bowie and pretty soon, you know, I'm playing Bowie songs and Kiss songs on the guitar. And I'm seeing that movie Labyrinth. <laughs> oh, look at those puppets. I like the puppets. Remember that? The Sesame Street, sweetie? Oh, yeah. You know. And so, answer to your question, Shelly, and a big chimmy guach for your financial support. I wish the rest of the Bougie crew was more like you, but no, nah, bunch of freeloaders. <laughs> um, uh, so our favorite, would you say the same thing? Yeah, um, David Bowie and Kiss for sure, but some of my favorite albums are by none of them. Oh yeah, what are your favorite albums? Billy Joel, the 52nd Street. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah, I listen to that every... Every so often. Yeah. Billy Joel, 50 seconds. So that's like with uh, honesty. Yep. And I also love Meatloaf. Meatloaf, man. Meatloaf, bad out of hell. Bad out of hell. Did you know Bruce Kulick was the guitarist on that album? No way, really? Yeah, I just found out. Bruce Kulick, the best guitar player Kiss ever had for like 20 years and nobody even gives him any credit. <laughs> Uh, he was a Meatloaf's guitarist during Black Battle to Hell. So, but why do you like those albums so much? Well, I mean, there's, they're just albums I listen to the whole album, like, from the first to the last song, and I always have. I mean, since I was a little girl. Yeah, it's kind of comfort food, you know, listening to familiar albums that are good. Yeah, I'm like that too. Especially with um, those two albums and uh, Young Americans. Um, I listen to that album a lot. Not a lot, but... Oh, and the Paul Stanley solo album. <laughs> yeah. For some reason, never gets old to me. In a dream, a long time ago, we fell in love, but what did we know? Years seemed to pass as time took its toll. Anyway, so, yeah, careers are different than jobs. If you have a job, and I was walking around yesterday, I was feeling just, you know, grateful once again. 
We got done with our show. I put on my old uh, <laughs> scarf and, <clears throat> and jean jacket and started marching around town. And I went and paid rent um, easily. Just walked up there because I'm a weirdo, you know. <laughs> you ever walk through the drive through at a bank? I walked up there. I pretended I was driving. And I went, I go, I go, uh, <laughs> I made her laugh. I said, remember uh, Wonder Woman's plane? I got a car like that. And that lady at the bank just started giggling. <laughs> hey, Zagame, 10 bucks from Zagame. That's $15. See, we're already making more money now for this show than we did as we, than Michael did as a professional teacher. <laughs> yeah. Me glad, Zagame. Thank you so much. <laughs> We're making Zagame laugh. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so I'm walking around, middle of the day, and sometimes I do this. <laughs> you know I do this. I kind of pray journal. It starts out with a prayer, and then I forget I'm praying, and it just turns into a gratitude list. So it's like, I'm walking. It's a beautiful autumn day, kind of cold, but blue sky and uh, I just start thinking to myself get your money do miigwech miigwech for my life miigwech for my health thank you for this beautiful day I'm so grateful that I don't have to be at a job that I don't want to be at look at me here it is it's 11 o'clock on the morning on a Monday morning I don't have to be anywhere I'm not I didn't call in sick faking it so I could just have a day off for once (laughs) <laughs> I don't have I got no deeds to do no promises to keep I'm dappled and drowsy and ready to sleep but the morning da, da, you know that Simon and Garfunkel <laughs> yeah and uh, I was thinking of my whole life whether I was in school or at a job or looking for a job or just you know Jobs have been a bane of my existence and the motivator to have a career. You know, nobody, I mean, I guess you guys have been pretty supportive. And actually, you know, our friends and the Bougie crew are super supportive. You know, but outside of this little bubble, um, I wasn't really raised to go for it nobody ever said you know man you you got something going on here you should believe in yourself you know you should go you know make your own path i was never encouraged to do that you know you should go to college you should get a job you should climb your way up you should get a union job you know the paved way the safe way you know nobody ever said hey man you should quit working Start a start a live stream. You can share your songs and your cartoons, man. <laughs> yeah. But here we are. So here's my advice to kids. And I guess this is my last word on careers. Everybody, Paul Stanley once wrote a song called Reason to Live. Everyone's got a reason to live. Baby! Exactly, sweetie. Everybody's got a reason to live, but it can't be your love. Um, but everybody's got this thing that you want to do. And it's different for everyone. Some people have these quiet, secret dreams. They know it's stupid, so they don't tell anybody, and they go about, well, you know, their sensible job. But inside, they're like, you know what? Man, I love making wallets. <laughs> I got a little little leather shop in my garage, and I'm really good at it. And if there's some way I could just make wallets and never have to go to work, you know, but that's impossible. You know, how many wallets a day would I have to sell, you know, and their dreams die because they don't believe in themselves. But if there's that thing that you love to do and 
there's a way you can kind of do it. They say, do, do what you love to help address a problem that people you love are having with it. So like you love to make wallets and you really love the, uh, I don't know, the elderly, <laughs> elderly war vets. You go, how can I help world, the Korean war vets in the nursing homes? Are they still alive, Korean war vets? <laughs> Not as many as used to be Vietnam vets. How can I use my love of, you know, leather works to help Vietnam vets. It seems absurd. Until you realize, hey, you know what? Somebody's making bracelets out of uh, rope and a piece of leather <laughs> that if you buy one, it gives support to um, those helper dogs for people with PTSD. Oh, yeah. You know. Maybe uh, you start making leather, making wallets and put up a Facebook page. It goes, hey, I'm making wallets to support, you know, Vietnam vets' mental health bills. You know, 10% of every wallet I sell, I'll give to, you know, the veterans' home. And then stand back and watch people asking for your wallets, man. Can give me 15 of those. I want to get one for everybody in my troop, you know. Uh, that's where I think Get You a Manadu will kind of go, hey, yeah, do this. We'll take one step this way and I'm going to open a door for you. So like, you know, Michael, when you started doing the uh, those Ojibwe books, uh, you know, it eventually led to this story or this show. Yeah. You want me to talk about um, Omics Blood? Do we have time? Well, let me see. What are we doing on time? 32 minutes? I could do a brief one. Yeah, okay. All right, everyone. So, big dreams. What's your career? You know, most careers don't come in the form of a job. You know, I mean, every high school teacher says, oh, yeah, this is my career. So... I majored in education. I specialized in this thing. I got my whatever teaching license or my coaching license. And then I followed the yellow brick road to teachers union and eventual retirement. Not that there's anything wrong with that. I mean, that was my grandmother's path actually. Um, but there's a lot of ways you can make a living in life. Make your way, you know, realize your potential and uh sometimes i heard this once from my wife eh, ida downwind <laughs> she goes you know sometimes you find your gifts in that intersection between your wounds and your blessings you know what in life is uh where are you where, where do your wounds lie you know is it an addiction? Is it an historical trauma? Is it depression? You know, what, what are the wounds? Are you obese? Whatever it is. And what are your blessings? So, in Michael's family, people who watch the show probably know that a, a rock star cartoonist is a descendant of boarding school survivors, <laughs> whatever you want to call it. Michael's grandparents went to the Flandreau Indian Boarding School. And boarding schools were uh, schools for Indian kids to learn how to speak English. And, and they were really, uh, you know, they were not only strict, um, you know, full-on immersion schools or whatever. They were kind of like Catholic schools and military schools all rolled into one. Um, and... Two grandparents, they both had kind of the extreme ends of the experience. Grandfather ran away, you know, was abused. Um, grandmother, 10 years later, shows up and excels in boarding school, crushes, <laughs> becomes an athlete, 
graduates with honors, goes on to college, becomes a teacher. Um, but the boarding schools are really a part of a, a lot of Indian people's families' experience. And so when Michael wrote a book, children's book, some of those themes came out. This is a story of Amic's Blood, a book by Michael Lyons that we should have talked about on Halloween, but I don't, we didn't remember. But it's also kind of a Christmas story. So let me get some, uh, let me get some, what you call it? Uh, what do I do with that slideshow? Um, I'll mix slide. Okay, here we go. I'll mix blood by Michael Lyons. Is this stupid having this thing? No, oh, it's kind of cool. Back in the days of the grandfathers, uh, there was a little girl named Amix. And she was half vampire and half elf. Her dad was a vampire. That's this guy right here. And her mom, right down here, was an elf. And this, and this, and this right here is a mix. So, uh, story opens up. Um, her sister, who's full-blooded vampire from... Her dad, Vladimir's first wife, I guess. <laughs> How does that work? Vladimir, was he, was he born before? Or married before? Because, you know, I never thought of it. I don't know why he's got one full-blooded <laughs> Indian daughter and one mixed blood. Yeah. I'm, I'm thinking that uh, Vladimir was a... Uh... Anyway. So, a uh, little girl that doesn't know where she fits in. She's not... She's only half vampire. In this world, the vampires are kind of like white people. They're like the dominant culture of this universe. And the elves, they're from a race of elves that were you know, good at making cookies, living out in the woods. I mean, they're tall, tallish. You can see that they're short compared to vampires, but, you know. Um, so, what happens? Uh, a mixed blood has to go to a boarding school. Because you see, in this world, the boarding schools are set up to help the elves um, assimilate into vampire culture. Is that right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. And that's why. And then Santa Claus is like the bad guy. Because when the elves try to escape from boarding school, it's Santa Claus that has to go round up the kids who run away trying to get back to the elf reservations. You know, some of the elves, they, they didn't want to live in the, uh, the vampire ways. They wanted to live like an elf. And, uh, you know, Amix blood, you know, she didn't, she didn't know where she belonged. She couldn't, she didn't want to drink blood. And, uh, but also the elves didn't really appreciate her. They all thought she was weird. You know, she had real pale skin and she had fangs and pointy ears. Well, pointy ears are okay, but so she goes off to boarding school. They make her sleep in a coffin. They try to get her to uh, really think of herself as an elf or as a vampire, but she doesn't like it. So she, middle of the night, she sneaks out, jumps on a train. And when she gets on the train, she meets a mummy named Stephen, and uh, they become friends and they, they kind of, you know, they start to understand each other because, you know, she uh, doesn't fit in anywhere. And uh, Stephen finally reveals, he goes, you know what, I'm not really just a, a, a mummy. You see, I'm half alien. My father was an Egyptian, my mother was a gray alien. And so he has to pretend to be dead just to make a living in this traveling Egyptian thing that was... The reason he was on a train is I was a traveling exhibit of Egyptian mummies and that. He goes, yeah, I got to pretend I'm dead during the whole exhibit. 
nobody knows I'm actually an alien. And so they kind of fall in love, actually. Well, just then, what happens? Evil uh, Santa Claus comes in. <laughs> and, uh, I don't want to ruin the story. But it's a story of a mixed-blooded um, elf. Let's see. Oh, here's a sweet picture. So I'll mix in Stephen. You know, even though they're from different races, they have a commonality in being mixed bloods. We suck out winnings. And not fitting in. So finally, I don't know, her older sister kind of saves the day and turns Santa Claus into a vampire. <laughs> but I hope I didn't ruin the book. A mixed blood. On sale now. At... What? <laughs> at the wild things, apparently. At Amazon.com. I did a terrible job telling this story, didn't I? Yeah, kind of. You should have let Natasha. <laughs> yeah, next time I'll let Natasha. You know what? I think we have a, a Natasha video somewhere where she does tell the Omic story. Maybe you could just post that on Facebook. Yeah, I, I'll think about it. Yeah. I'll mix blood. <laughs> to learn more about people of mixed ancestries, I don't know, Google it. Go to Wikipedia. More eyes to flat earth. Hey, more eyes to flat earth. Welcome to the show. You going to watch some cartoons after this? I might have to. I usually watch cartoons when I eat. I'm not recommending them, but I'm kind of addicted to uh, Family Guy and South Park. <laughs> I've, I've watched those cartoons over and over again. I have most of the seasons on DVD. I'm kind of stuck in the 80s here. Like I still have a DVD slash VHS player. Those machines last forever. <laughs> I know. And the TVs. I've got two of the biggest, heaviest TVs that were ever made. At the end of the era of the box TV, before they came out with flat screens, TVs had grown to the size of like, I don't know, like a car engine. Or at least the weight of the front end of a car. I got a TV that I think is going to crush the dresser in the end. It's got to weigh at least 150 pounds, maybe 100 pounds. The thing is huge. And the screen isn't that big. The screen's 25 inches or whatever. <laughs> but, um, like, what, what am I going to do with it? You can't throw it in the garbage. I gotta, what do I got to drive to a landfill to get rid of a perfectly good working TV? And that's the other thing. So I've got two of these big old TVs from the 80s that I still watch because they still work. I'm not going to throw away a perfectly good TV. <laughs> and... And VCR player. <laughs> yeah. What are you going to do with a VCR player? Well, I stole some VCR movies. I don't really feel like watching European Vacation again, but if I did, I got that machine right there. <laughs> yep. So, I don't know. Uh, Daniel Black, Wally Bear. I know I'm wasting my breath, but it boils my blood. What boils your blood? Holy man, there's a lot of messages here. But I got better scroll up. More eyes to flatter. Sorry, I'm already in the into crew. Into crew. I hope they don't listen to Kiss too. We do listen to Kiss. I'm so sorry. I'm not saying it's good music. It's just what I listen to. <laughs> just because I love it doesn't mean it's like good music. I, I would never say that. NASA watcher. I do watch, watch NASA. <laughs> I'm not saying I believe anything that NASA says, but anytime they have another, you know, they just landed something on uh, Mars again. We're going we're gonna to learn something about what's in the core of the Earth by a uh, little, little 
spaceship that landed on the planet Mars and drilled eight feet into the surface of Mars and sent back a photograph. You know that we've got video of Mars rotating, spinning or whatever? No. Yeah, I saw it. I mean, NASA says they have video of that. Can't get a picture of the Earth spinning in space. No video of that, but we got Mars. <laughs> so dumb. La, la, la. You're working now. If you're talking about this, maybe work. Don't forget to set up ads. <laughs> I know. I got to set up ads. He's all right. More eyes. Have you gotten into any uh, trouble? Do they try to censor you for having the... Um, having the word flat earth i've been kind of afraid to say that term i think i thought uh youtube and google are gonna you know try to crack down on weirdos like us i heard you guys are the original masons in america native americans that is are you just using native americans for your little show Mm Hmm. sweetie i know there's a turd in the punch bowl. Nah. <laughs> yeah, there's a turd in a punch bowl. He's wise to us, sweetie. Flat Earth has got to go. <laughs> yes. yes, it's true. We are the, the Freemasons. I didn't want to say it out loud. If uh, Jessica Wobuz was here, she'd, she'd back me up. I'm part of the Illuminati. Uh, I am Jeffrey Epstein. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Do you think Jeff Epstein killed himself? I don't even think he's dead. Yeah, me either. Um, you know that Ghislaine Maxwell's gonna walk too, huh? Yeah. But yeah, so the way it works is that uh, Native Americans are the original Freemasons. We were the first ones to discover America. No, we're not from here either. We're the Tartarians. We were from Russia, Tartaria. We migrated here and shrunk for some reason. We used to be giants. But we got here. I'm not how, sure how this works, but there were buildings all over the countryside. Anything you see that is like impossible architecture, where you go, what? How did they build these cathedrals and these amazing just everything anything with domes and spirals and 50 foot ceilings and windows that are halfway underground um those great buildings in every city the original indians found that and we said oh uh, we can't let people know that there was a civilization here before We'll start a secret society called the Freemasons because all this masonry is free. And then we, we, uh, we hired the Rockefellers. We're like, look, you guys, I want you guys to make, a, make up a bunch of fake history. Think of us as a primitive, like, cavemen. We didn't, we're, let's pretend Indians still lived in the Bronze Age. And we'll say the Italians discovered America in 1492. All right. Okay, places, everybody. All right. Advanced Ojibwe people from the future. Okay, everyone put on your primitive clothing. Okay, let's all get in your canoes. All right, put away your cell phones. All right, and action. And then they, they faked a history that made us look like dances with wolves. Oh, we're hunting buffalo. You mean those cows and costumes? Yeah, okay. And then uh, eventually, this became America. Everything you think you know is a lie. But we, but we know the truth. And I've got to reveal the truth a little by little here on this show. Because we make the sweet junia. <laughs> Thanks again, you guys. Fifteen dollars. That's so awesome. And Jim Dunn's here. Boujou. Jim says I'm as good as dead. Oh no, really? Ah, I'm going to miss that old Jim. Missy trying to Squid Game. Thank you, Missy. Squid Game was what the game show I was trying to think of, where you just die. 
Wally Bear, I'm already dead, so to me, it wouldn't matter. What are you guys talking about? <laughs> it's getting just dark and heavy in the uh, comment section. Um, everyone's dying. Stop baiting. Take it elsewhere. Oh, is, is Flat Earth baiting? You're working now. If you're talking about this, maybe work. But don't forget to set up ads. <laughs> yeah. For your corporate masters. Yep. Who's our corporate master, sweetie? Patreon. If you want a great corporate master, come to patreon.com. What? You're an artist. You think that you're too cool to accept money from people? Uh, Michelangelo had patrons, you guys. Oh, no, not me. I'm just going to make it somehow by, by becoming famous. Look, you're not Hunter Biden. If you want to make art, get a Patreon page. And if you'd like to support Michael Lyons and Natasha and myself, Patreon. Click the links below. Or give us a PayPal. Or really crush and be like uh, Zagame and Shelly Ham. And give us a super chat. How dare you, says Wally Bear. Um, I doubt any Native Americans would support Kiss toys. <laughs> really? I don't know. Kiss is pretty popular everywhere. Um, I heard you guys in the original Masons. Oh, wait. Is more eyes trying to troll us? How dare you? How Greta Thunberg dare you? Who I kind of like now. I know, ever since I saw her sing, We're no strangers to love. Yeah, she's just a dumb kid. You know, somebody told her to say that. Oh, how dare you? You come to us looking for hope. <laughs> yeah. Greta. Quilts. I'm going to make quilts. There you go, Zagame. Yeah, make your quilts. Do what you love and the, the money will follow. I mean, I do believe everyone's here for a reason. And we're all given gifts. And sometimes it seems like, what a weird gift. Some people are really good at knitting. And you go, even drawing for that matter. Some people go, why? Okay, I can draw really well. So what? I can look at a photograph and translate it into a drawing. Or there's a, you can scan that and do it too, I guess. What a stupid gift, drawing. But then, you never know, that skill, what that really is, might be your gift, might be your, that might be a hint from the creator of what you're supposed to do with your life. What do you love to do anyway? What are you good at? That's another part. People say, you know, how do you find your purpose? It's like, well, what's something that people thank you for? You know, you just find it once, it's like, when's the last time someone said, hey, thanks a lot for doing that? You know, hey, thank you. Um, some people are really good with kids. You know, end up watching, you know, babysitting your kids. You know, it's a neighbor. And she's got that skill. She's a, a mother. She's a caregiver. You know, maybe she's supposed to have a big family. <laughs> you know, maybe she's supposed to be a teacher, a coach, or start a school. You know. I've also heard that uh, Gitche Manadu, he doesn't, uh, you know, he'll send you your calling, he'll put you on your path. But he doesn't um, elect the uh, qualified. How does that work? He qualifies the people he selects. Whatever. If you find yourself in the right path, pretty soon you'll find yourself like with new skills. You know, I don't want to ruin the illusion of this show too much, but. Having a live stream show has made us have to kind of think on our feet. I never did this before. 
just kind of come up with funny jokes or whatever. Um, you know, impersonations. You want to do an impersonation for the people? I could try. Um, let's see, who, who should I impersonate? Can you do Kermit the Frog? Kermit the Frog. Nah, that's a bad one. Can you do me? Can I do you? All right. Um, <clears throat> this is my impersonation of Natasha. Hey, everybody. How's it going? Welcome to the show. Oh, that sounds just like me. I know, huh? You're really good at that. Yeah. But like doing impersonations and stuff like that, we have had to, you know, giggle. Where did that come from? I didn't know I could do that. I was like, well, creator will qualify you <laughs> if he wants you to do something. It's like, yeah, I'm going to tell you what. I'm giving you inspiration. Or maybe it'll be for a song or, you know. Every drawing, people who draw kind of know this. There's secretly accidents. When you do make a good drawing and you go, where did that come from? I, you know, like this drawing. Michael, what did... What was behind um, this drawing of uh, mixed blood? Yeah, um, I don't know. Thanks. This is why I don't have you on the show more often. <laughs> what? You're a terrible guest. You can't give me one word answers. Okay, um, I was inspired by, uh, well, her hair. Actually, I'll tell you the truth. I dated a girl in college who had hair like that. That's your inspiration? Yep. All right. Okay. Well, I'll get back to you when I, when I have absolutely nothing else to say. Sweetie, it's getting late. Did you want to get up here? I could get up there. Do we have a song we can play first? I don't know. Not really. <clears throat> I kind of... The only song we had was the uh, months of the year. We could, um... Hey, why don't you, uh... Can we do... What you call it? Fly by night? Oh, um, yeah, let me see if I still have that. I've got golden ears. <laughs> okay, play golden ears. No, that's too long. Country Roads? Yeah, Country Roads by John Denver. All right. Hey, hey, mama, say the way you move. Gonna make you sweat. Gonna make you egg. groove. Now, hey, everybody. Welcome back to the show. Welcome back. To booze you, nana booze you, the podcast about Ojibwe language and culture. I am Natasha, and over here is the um, producer of the show, or whatever you want to call him, Michael Lyons. Uh, you want to say hello, Michael? Yeah, sure. Hey, everybody. How you doing? Welcome back to the show. And today, we're going to sing a song. By none other than John Denver. It turns out we got kind of a uh, <laughs> a lot of John Denver fans who watch this show, huh? Yeah, that's true. Okay, so this is um, Country Roads by John Denver. Get up here, man. All right. Almost heaven, West Virginia, Blue Ridge Mountain, Shenandoah River. Life is old there, older, older than the trees, younger than the mountains, glowing like a breeze. Country roads take me home to the place I belong. West Virginia, Mountain Mama, take me home, Country Roads. All my memories gather round her, Miner's Lady, stranger to blue water. Dark and dusty, Painted on the sky, a misty taste of moonshine, teardrop in my eye. Country roads take me home to 
the place I belong, West Virginia. Mountain mama, take me home, country roads. I hear her voice in the morning hour. She calls me. The radio reminds me of my home far away. And driving down the road I get the feeling that I should have been home yesterday Yesterday Country roads take me home To the place where I belong West Virginia Mountain Mama Take me home Country roads <laughs> and you have been watching Buju Nana Buju, a podcast about Ojibwe language and culture. You are Michael Lyons, and I am Natasha. Buju Nana Buju Neiman Wendum Oma Noongum Buju Nana Buju Neiman Wendum Oma Noongum Buju Nana <laughs> So what's going on? Hey everybody! I love this story of uh, mixed blood. I'm mixed blood. It's really a story. I mean, it's kind of it's kind of an allegory for um, boarding schools and that. I mean, it's because it's mentioned, but it's really a story about relationships and families. You know, it's hard for families sometimes. And uh, you know, there's some kind of emotional points in this. Uh, do you remember when this book first came out and you were working in Walker? Oh yeah. <laughs> and that teacher got mad at you. No, as a parent. Oh, yeah. Can I tell the story? Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> so when Michael was, uh, what, were you, what was your title? I was Indian Ed Director. Director of Indian Education at a school in northern Minnesota. This book came out, and all the kids read it together. And um, I don't think he thought it was going to have the kind of reaction, but some people really hated it. They were like, uh, this parent comes up, to him after school, he goes, "Hey, Stephen, Stephen," and, and Michael turns around and goes, "What?" Because listen, Stephen, whatever your name is, Mister Lyons. He goes, "Stephen," and then he realized, "Oh, he thought he was screwing up your name because of Stephen the character." But he goes, "What gives you the right to give my little daughter this book?" Because <laughs> we're reading it in class. But he was upset. He thought it was anti. Christian or something? Yeah, I don't remember his beef. Um, I mean, Santa Claus gets turned into a vampire. So I don't know if you thought it was symbolic of Satanism winning over Christianity. Oh, it's so stupid, though. <laughs> yeah, Santa Claus is not Christian. That's not a Christian symbol, Santa Claus. It's just the opposite. Um, yeah, but anyway... It was kind of controversial. It seems so stupid now. Anyway. You're asking me, will I love grow? Going in the kingdom's in. Is there go around in a show? La 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 la. Uh, are we being trolled? Yeah, I think that flutter guy turns out to be a weirdo. Oh, really? Dug on it. It's weird because there is like this disinformation campaign against flat Earth truth. <laughs> you know, people pretend like the flat Earth society. These websites all set up just to give disinformation of what. They say, this is what people from, who believe in the flat earth think. It's like, no, none of that. We do not think we live in a 
flat disk floating out in space. We don't believe in space, dummies. But, so flat earth, it is kind of cool that at least the flat earth disinformation people are aware of us. At least somebody's watching. So more eyes to flat earth. Doesn't think, uh, we don't act like we're more than seven. <laughs> well, you got a point. I, this kid stuff, 30 plus year old people should not, should be doing something better than playing with puppets, Michael. Why do you, <laughs> I like how it's just 30 plus. Like it's not embarrassing for a guy who's 28 to be playing with stuffed animals. But over 30, that's the line. <laughs> I thought the line was originally like fourth grade. But yeah, you're absolutely right. Why can't you grow up, Michael? It's not childish playing with your dolls and your stuffed animals and puppets. I, I'm, oh, honestly, as my grandmother would say, honest to Pete, you're like a little kid. You should be more like flat, more eyes to flat earth. <laughs> well, what are you doing? You're watching a puppet show. <laughs> What's more childish? Putting on a puppet show or watching a puppet show? <laughs> you know, <laughs> okay. And what's wrong with being childish? You're racist. <laughs> La, when the Windigo comes. Oh, cool. What's this? Bonjour, when the Windigo comes. Adult Swim has been awesome for years. <laughs> Cartoons for the grown-ups. You did a great job. Same here. Team is like a piece of furniture. <laughs> yeah, I know. When the Windigo comes, that would be a good name for a children's book. You should write a children's book called When the Windigo Comes. VHS is so much more useful though. I copied all my favorite movies. Oh yeah, you can copy on VHS. <laughs> it's just so weird. Like I finally, it was years ago, it was before, I think it was before 2000. I finally threw, no, it was after, it was like 2002. I had to move and lighten the load. And I had just hundreds of records that were well played, beat up, worthless. I sold the ones I could, but then in the end, I just had to throw away records. Because I was like, what am I going to do? Just haul around my record collection for the rest of my life? Why? I'm never going to play these again. <laughs> you know, yeah, I got memories for the songs, but what am I going to do with a Frampton Comes Alive? <laughs> you know, into the dumpster. And it felt bad. I, I hated throwing away my records. We can still listen to them on YouTube. But... La, la, la. Um... More eyes on Earth. More eyes to flat Earth on Earth. I can't upload for a week on most places <laughs> because it says flat Earth on it. Darn it, I dropped my lighter. No smoke break for me. <laughs> oh no! Somebody get a light for Wally Bear. Missy's getting mad at the thumbs down guy. <laughs> La, 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 la. I don't know where Jessica is. She's missing in action. She sent a really cute picture. We should have put it up. <laughs> when, she de when she dressed her baby in a Indian <laughs> Halloween costume. It was just adorable. She goes, oh yeah, I watched your show on Monday. We're, we pretended to be outraged by Indian um, Halloween costumes. She goes, well, guess who <laughs> was dressed up for their baby as an Indian? Hey, Dwayne Hislaw is back. Bonjour, Dwayne. Hello, and I'm drinking Powerade. Let's get the Powerade going. Rocking the Powerade. Well, bonjour, Dwayne. It's his law or the highway. <laughs> la, la, la. 
Daniel Black says, I'm not pointing any fingers, because that would be rude. He's pointing with his lips. Ooh, <laughs> I think it was that person. Joseph asks, Bonjour, Joseph. Wally, do you folks like coffee? Do we like coffee? Coffee is sacred. Makade mushkiki wabu. We call coffee the black medicine water. So sacred is coffee. And most Indian people will start their day every day religiously <laughs> with a cup of makade mashkiki wabu. With a cup of black medicine water. I've even heard of some of the really traditional people. People on the number day we went. People following the traditional path, they'll actually bring a cup of coffee into the bathroom with them when they're taking their morning dump. Can you believe it? Do you bring a coffee cup into the bathroom when you go number two? Uh, I don't want to talk about this on the show. <laughs> you do, don't you? Michael drinks coffee while he's pooing. <laughs> what? What has happened to this show? I can't believe you just said that to all these people. Forever. <laughs> so embarrassing. Anyway, <laughs> what else is going on here? La, la, la. <laughs> Get me a bucket after the show or whatever the audience is talk taking. <laughs> what, what are you talking about? When Wendigo when comes says, and at throwing away records, though, but I understand. Yeah. <laughs> la, 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 do, do, do. There is a thing. Um, you know, I'll still play with puppets once in a while. This is for any of the kids out there. You know, the movie Labyrinth is really about that, um... Passage from being a kid to being an adult. Sarah, the little girl in that movie, um, it starts out with her playing make-believe with her dog. And then her mom calls her in and says, we're going out, you gotta babysit. And that's what starts all the, she gets mad, I wanna babysit. But also she was outside playing. And I remember being about that age and you get right that, there's that one summer when uh, you still have all your toys. You got a big box that's underneath the bed. When no one's around, you can pull them out. And you can, you know, play. And you pretend to be Luke Skywalker, and then this person pretends to be Darth Vader. And you're, oh, I'm your father, Luke. No, how can you? <laughs> you know, whatever. I'm going camping. And then you play with your whatever. It's called playing. Pretend. It was the most natural thing in the world for me when I was a kid. It was like as soon as I could be set free, they could go outside and play. I'd be like, okay. I didn't even need toys half the time. Just grab a stick. Oh, the sword. Now it's a gun. Um, but I could just pretend. I would just pretend to be somebody else. I would pretend there's other people there I was fighting or friends with or going on an adventure. Just pretend. Bring my stuffed animal, little cutie. And, you know, it's kind of like Christopher Robin and all those stuffed animals. You're just pretending to be a person and pretending you're stuffed animals or friends. And then... There's that bitter age, and I think it comes with puberty, <laughs> where your mind, it gets self-conscious. It doesn't want to lose itself and pretend anymore. And you go away. And pretty soon you're reading about celebrities and cars and clothing and music and the news and the history and science and whatever. And you grow up. But there's still a little person on the inside, your inner child. And that's what I love about that one scene. I kind of love the whole movie, but Christopher Robin, when he's all grown up, and Ewan McGregor is sitting there all 
full of worries and he's sitting in the park and he goes, what to do, what to do? And from behind him, he can hear Winnie the Pooh say, what to do, what to do? And Christopher Robin turns around, all grown up. He goes, Pooh? <laughs> kind of like, what? But he remembers. And wouldn't it be wild if just in, in a moment, if tonight, one of your childhood teddy bears just poked up his head on the bed and said hello, what would you say? Would you run out screaming, assuming it was a demon? It would part of you go, Winnie the Pooh? <laughs> what? Are you real? You know? Because was it real? All your play acting and stuff? Was there one little part of it that was real? Like when, when Dorothy wakes up and she goes, wait a second, you were there and you were there? She's pointing out the guys who were actually... The actors who played the scarecrow and the, you know, cowardly lion and that. But, but she couldn't have been. You know, that's our, that's our crazy world of imagination or a childhood, or inner child. I don't know. But this inner child says, I think it's time we, time we should be going. What do you think, sweetie? Yeah. I think it's well over an hour. Okay. Hey, everybody. What have we learned today on this Nijo Geisha Good? It's a second day or a Tuesday. We also learned that Gushkadino Gisus is the freezing over moon. It's getting cold out there. I saw snow again last night. Yep. It didn't stay, though. Um, and we learned Kikanu no win. Is a year. Jesus is a month. Gives you good is a day. And Michael, you want to add anything? No, that's pretty good. Okay. Well, everybody, just want to say me quitch piss and dawi egg. Thank you for listening. And hey, there she is, Jessica Wabuz says I'm still alive. Well, oh, good. We were worried sick, young lady. What are you just getting in from last night? Nah. <laughs> Suck at me. Jessica, something best to just watch when you come in this late. Now <laughs> we have to listen to the teacher. Yeah. Listen to the teacher yell at you. <laughs> Suck at me! That's quite enough. I'm trying I'm trying to to do the outro. <laughs> Get in the back of the class. I'm gonna draw a little dot on the chalkboard. You can put your nose on that dot. And stand there until I say so. That's what they really did to me. <laughs> anyway, um, so from the bottom of my heart, miigwetch, biz and dawi egg. Thank you for listening. And miigwetch, gonawabi egg. Thank you for watching. Boujou, nana boujou. The podcast about Ojibwe language and culture. La 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 la